So you want to know what it's like to live in Fort Myers or even compare it to some of the surrounding cities? We're going to do that next. Hey everybody, my name is Craig Cunha. I am a local real estate agent with John R. Wood Properties right here in Southwest Florida. And if you've never been to this channel before, we talk about what it's like to live, play, eat, sleep, and buy real estate on the Gulf Coast. So if that's what you're looking for, this is the channel for you. So go ahead and subscribe so you see all the future videos and go ahead and leave a comment if there's something else you want to know that I didn't discuss. I'm getting calls from people every day and I love it. So if you've got a question and you want that answer, you've got to call, text or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast. Okay, so we're going to talk about Fort Myers, what it's like to live there and the cities that surround it. There's a few cities you may want to consider that offer something a little bit different than what Fort Myers does. Fort Myers is the central city to Southwest Florida. It has everything around it that many of the others don't. There's, there's the airport, I-75, which runs north and south, which will get you back and forth from all the way over in Miami, up to Tampa and beyond. So if you're looking for uh, the ability to commute up and down based upon work, you wanna stay close to 75 to shorten your commute. Because obviously as we get to season, it gets even busier here. So you don't want to make that more difficult than it needs to be. We have a bunch of gated communities and right off of I-75 is where a lot of them are. So if that's the kind of thing you want, you want the safety, security, and just the, uh, the HOA to maintain the uh, look of the community and keep it in good repair to keep the values, then that's probably the place you want to be. If you're on the east side of I-75, which is where many of those communities are, it also puts you further from the beach, Fort Myers Beach. So if that's something that's a real draw for you, then we probably need to push further over towards McGregor. The McGregor area is a more historic area, a number of communities that sit right on the river. It's absolutely gorgeous. But to even commute across the city, is, it doesn't take that long. It's not very big east to west. Uh, it runs more north and south. Um, we do break our city in into uh, North Fort Myers, Central Fort Myers, and South Fort Myers. Uh, so that's another thing to consider if you're looking at Fort Myers. If you're looking at the downtown, there are a number of condo buildings down there that will overlook the river. Absolutely gorgeous. The downtown is revitalized. They've got new cobblestone roads down there. The restaurants are vibrant. There's tons of uh, live music down there. They hold bike nights, art walks, music walks, all that stuff right down there. We, we love going down there for that congregation of people. It's very festive. It's very safe. You don't have to worry about when you go down to downtown Fort Myers, you don't have to worry about that. Um, there's also a new hotel called the Luminary, and that is a must do. You have to get up to the bar and restaurant on the top floor and look at that view. It's breathtaking. The other thing that Fort Myers offers is spring training. If you're a baseball fan, you're going to have a choice between going to JetBlue Park with the Red Sox or going to Hammond Stadium with the Twins. It's a huge draw in our area. There will be miles long traffic waiting to get into the games when they're happening, but they only happen for a few weeks. So if it's something that you really want to do, go ahead and schedule that in advance. Because Fort Myers is so central, it's also very tight. There is a lot of shopping, a lot of restaurants. Um, things will be very busy, very congested. The traffic is no fun in the winter time with all the seasonal folks. It's not that much better when it's off season, but if you're going to live in Fort Myers, you need to understand traffic will always be an issue. So just be patient and let it do its flow and you'll get to where you're going eventually. Another place that people love is Fort Myers Beach. It is probably the beach on our coast that has the most entertainment offered. Live music in most every place you go to. Great food, lots of seafood if that's your thing. Many of the restaurants are up against the shoreline there on the Gulf. And you can, whether it's look at the pier, take in a sunset from there, or just hear the crash of the waves coming in. You're obviously gonna do a lot of people watching there because there's a lot of people on the beaches. That's why they're here. But that is the area you want to go to if you're looking for a party, or if you're looking for some kind of entertainment and you want the beach atmosphere with it. I'm gonna reverse engines for one second and talk about Fort Myers um, price for homes there. There was a, I did a report that uh, basically went from October 2019 to October 2020 and the single family homes, a single family home in this report was a three bedroom, two bath home. Nothing special about it outside of that. The median price was 280,000 and it was a $25,000 increase from 2019. Condos, 195,000 
with a $22,000 increase from 2019. Now, the reason I bring that up is because Fort Myers Beach is much different. In their numbers, their single family home is now 675,000, which was a $35,000 increase over the past year. And the condos on Fort Myers Beach, believe it or not, they're at 400,000, but that was a $6,000 decrease from 2019. It's very rentable property because it offers the surroundings that it does. While there's a lot of entertainment that's there on Fort Myers Beach, sometimes parking can be a little bit difficult. So if you do not want to deal with parking on the beach, there's now a trolley system that runs from a parking lot that's put off site. I believe it's about two miles away. So you jump on the trolley, run down to the beach, have your day down there, jump back on the trolley and get back to your car and go home. So it's a relatively easy process, but I still like to have my vehicle right on the beach. That's just me. With Fort Myers Beach, while it has all this entertainment, the water is not as beautiful as it can be in some other places. Venice Beach, absolutely gorgeous. Sanibel, Captiva, those are all wonderful because they're not affected by the water that comes down the river. The Caloosahatchee River does put um, the silt and things into the water and at times there can be a darker hue to the, uh, the Gulf water. So if you want pristine, clear water, Fort Myers Beach may not be for you. And the next city is Cape Coral, Florida. If you've heard of Fort Myers, you've heard of Cape Coral. It is one of the most well-known cities in our area. It's also known as the Waterfront Wonderland, and it's because we have over 400 miles of canals. If you are a, an avid fisherman, boater, or otherwise, Cape Coral might be the place for you. We're gonna have more opportunity for well-priced homes because of the fact there's more choices available. The Cape Coral, because of the fact that it is one of the largest landmass cities in the state, there's also a ton of growth going on here. There's a lot of open spaces. If you're one of those people that wants space around you, you can go up into the Northwest. It's still gonna be well in septic, but you can go up in the Northwest and when you build your home or buy a home there, if there's any lots around it that are still not built on, you can buy those as well and give yourself a permanent buffer around you. Um, right now, vacant land in that area is going for approximately six to 9,000. So you can secure some land relatively inexpensively. The only caveat to that is when the water and sewer assessments go into the area. We're not sure of the schedule yet for many of the, many of the parts up there. However, when it happens, it's a $20,000 expense to switch over. And it doesn't matter if there's a house on there or not, it's attached to the land that way. So be aware that there's gonna be additional expenses down the road for the vacant land up there, whether it's built on or not. Now in Cape Coral, much of this, the entertainment is down in the Southeast and Southwest. In fact, the Southeast is where our downtown area is. And there are a number of bars and restaurants down there that people frequent. Uh, if you go just South of there, you run into the Boathouse, which is an amazing waterfront restaurant. Uh, always vibrant and very um, energized. There's usually live music there. They've got tables down in the sand. We sat down in the sand right on the water last time and it was amazing. At nighttime, it gets all lit up. They have all those lights going up on up above you and it is just a wonderful experience. The breezes come off the water. You can just sit there and relax for the evening and take it all in. Now Cape Coral is mostly subdivisions. There's only a handful of gated communities. So if you absolutely know you want a gated community, your choices are gonna be much slimmer in Cape Coral. There's also two bridges that go east and west into Fort Myers from Cape Coral, and there's a $2 toll that you pay coming into Cape Coral. You don't pay it leaving, you just pay it coming in. There is one small beach in Cape Coral. It sits right down by the Yacht Club. There's talk and plans about expanding the area down there, but as of right now, that beach area might be 300 yards max that you'll be able to use the beach space. There's also a ton of boat ramps throughout Cape Coral, obviously because of all the boating that we do here, uh, we have to have a way to access it. So you'll find it in every part of Cape Coral. So if you wanna trailer your boat, you're gonna to have to keep it behind your house, keep it in a, in a storage lot with other boats um, or behind a fence because the code enforcement folks will come around and they will ticket you if you don't have it placed appropriately on your property. Now, single family home in Cape Coral, the median price is 244,000. That's a $17,000 increase from 2019. And a condo is currently a median price of 182,000, and that's a $28,000 increase from 2019. Now, the next city is Naples. We've all heard of Naples. We know Naples is a little bit more prominent. Uh, it definitely carries an air about it, especially west of 75. That's where all the uh, really 
pricey and expensive properties are. In fact, any anywhere in Florida, the closer you get to the shoreline, the higher the price goes. But Naples has that air about it. It's known for being uh, a little bit more pristine and the beaches there are absolutely wonderful. So if you're looking for super clean beaches and you want to be in an atmosphere that you're gonna be feeling like royalty, maybe you should be in Naples. Uh, if you go down to Fifth Avenue, that's where a bunch of the uh, restaurants and shopping that are high-end shopping, that's all going to be found down there. It's an experience to try once or twice. Fifth Avenue is also uh, in Old Naples, which is a mix of historic and modern architecture. So it'll give you a feel completely different than many areas in Southwest Florida. Now, East Naples is a little bit more affordable than you would find over towards the shoreline. Naples has the second highest cost of living overall, and a big part of it obviously is the housing. A single family home median price, and again, three bedroom, two bath, this is all of Naples. So it's north, south, east, and west. Yes, I know that complicates things because pricing is so drastically different, but 375,000 is the median price for all of Naples. That's a $45,000 increase from 2019. Condos are currently 285,000, and that's a $30,000 increase from 2019. Now, the one thing about Southwest Florida is it seems that the further south you go, the more expensive things get and a little bit more pristine things get. So what's just south of Naples? Marco Island. It's a very small town, but it's very exclusive, has wonderful restaurants on the waterfront. I've been to a couple of them and they're great atmosphere. Again, usually live music, great food, wonderful views. So if you get a chance, get into Marco Island. But when we're talking about pricing homes, let's talk about Marco Island. Their single family home, the median price, 725,000. Now get this, the increase from last year, 135,000. A condo on Marco Island is 460,000 median price right now. And that's an increase of 20,000 from 2019. So you can see Marco Island is one of the highest costs of living in Southwest Florida. And we're gonna talk about the other one right now. That next city is Sanibel Island. Yes, islands, a little bit more expensive. Well, Sanibel is again, an exclusive area. Uh, you do travel over a bridge, it's a $6 toll to get over there. In this area, this island is just a slower pace. It's a real beachy town kind of a feel. Wonderful uh, landscaping and um, canopies of trees on the down the road, biking paths throughout the island. There are restaurants and shops out there, but no big franchise kind of um, place. This is true island living. There are plenty of mansions that sit right on the Gulf. Just gorgeous properties. So if that's your thing, that might be the place for you. Now, Sanibel, their median price right now is 745,000. So again, very comparable to Marco Island they have gone up 105,000 since 2019. And a condo on Sanibel is 580,000 median price. And that's a $40,000 increase from last year. Now, one of the best things about Sanibel for everybody that resides in the area is the Sanibel Causeway. It's always littered with people. If you want to people watch, this is a good place for it. You'll see all kinds of stuff. You can picnic along either side of it. People take out uh, windsurfing boards. They take out jet skis. There's, you know, kayaks, paddle boards, whatever you want. If you just want your little, you know, unicorn floaty, you can take that out there too. But this is the area that people congregate just to have a good time. There's wonderful views because it's just nothing but water, water, water. It's absolutely gorgeous. The breezes that come across there are amazing. So if you want somewhere to hang out, spend the $6, get on the causeway, back up to the water and enjoy. Another area is Bonita Springs and Estero. They kind of run together. They sit right between South Fort Myers and North Naples. Now in this area, what's interesting about it is Estero is almost completely new, but they have a ton of shopping, outlet shopping. So if you wanna to go to the Miramar outlets, hundreds of stores right there. Uh, then there's also Coconut Point, which sits on US 41. So the two main roads that run there, are US 41 and I-75, and they cut right through this whole area. The area is not very large, but huge on shopping and restaurants. Uh, as far as Bonita Springs, it is a little bit different in that they have some older neighborhoods there, but once again, not that big. They do offer pricing that's right kind of in between what Fort Myers and what Naples is. A single family home in the Bonita area 
is $352,000 median price right now. That's a $27,000 increase from 2019. Condo median price is 265,000, and that's a $30,000 increase from last year. So you can see their cost of living falls right in between Fort Myers and Naples. And again, that's just the way it seems to go. As you move south, prices go up. The next one is Lehigh Acres. Now, Lehigh Acres, I lived there when I first came to this coast. Actually, I started on Fort Myers Beach just for the fun of it. Stayed there for a month and realized, probably not for me. It was super busy, it was crowded. We just felt like we couldn't spread our wings at all. So we left and went out to Lehigh Acres because everybody said, hey, it's inexpensive to live out there. And what does everybody want? As much as you can get for as little money as you possibly can spend, right? So we buy a little three bedroom, two bath place. Ironically enough, in the backyard, there was ATV trails that ran over to all these tracks that we could ride. Now I was in all my glory at that point. I'm thinking, yeah, I get a four wheeler. I get to run around, I get to play. Well, that was a long time ago. We ended up building another home in Lehigh Acres and it backed up to a canal. Again, gave us privacy from other people, but something to me just didn't resonate. It didn't feel like a city I wanted to live in. There's not much there. There are gonna be some small um, shops and restaur restaurants that do offer some things to you. Uh, there is a super Walmart out there, but there's no Target, there's no Home Depot, there's no Lowe's. So all that big, store stuff that you'd be looking for, it's not there. Uh, it still has a small town feel and most of it is still well and septic. So if you know you don't want well and septic, Lehigh Acres might not be for you. Lehigh Acres median price is 195,000. That's up 15,000 from last year. Condo is now at 155, 155,000. That's a $23,000 increase from last year. So again, pricing you can hear is very low compared to other areas. But once again, living in a lower income area and a lower priced area is gonna give you a completely different lifestyle than you would get elsewhere. A lot of open spaces out there. There's a lot of uh, scrub pines and palmetto bushes that are on the properties out there. Uh, so it looks completely different than many of the other areas. There's also acreage available out to the east side and a bunch of half acre properties and acre properties. So if that's your thing, it could work for you. Pricing again is still lower than many other areas, but it's gonna all be well and septic. And the drive to get to most places is gonna be much longer. Now I'm gonna give you a bonus city, which is Matt Lachey. And the reason why I'm giving this one is I love this place. It is the coolest little fishing town. The road that goes right down the center of the, uh, the city or the town, it has a drawbridge still and it is functional. So. If you hit that, you're gonna be waiting a little bit, but this town is so small, it's a strip of land that runs right down the middle and the houses run off each side. Most of them are stilt homes that sit partially in the water. Uh, there's a place out there called Burt's and it is a great little uh, bar and restaurant. Uh, they have a fish fry special uh, once a week, but the view that you get off of this, it's just, just this gorgeous water view. So if you haven't, ever been to Mount Lachey. If you come to visit, you've got to go out there and check it out. Uh, Michelli's is out there as well. It's another place that has live music. Uh, Burt's does too. Sometimes they even have steel drums out there. So if you like that vibe, you could possibly pick up on that. Um, but this little town is very quaint, uh, so different than anything else in the area. And it's kind of a must see when you come here. There's some art places out there with some really cool um, pieces <clears throat> and some other small businesses that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, fishing is absolutely wonderful off, off of uh, Matt Lachey Bridge. Uh, my son caught 15 mangrove snapper off that bridge one afternoon and kind of made me look silly. Now to get sales number for, for Matt Lachey was very difficult because the low volume of sales. So I can just surmise that they're somewhere in between the 450 and 550 price range on average for that same 3-2 kind of style home that we're talking about. Uh, but that would take a completely different kind of search to get that information. So if it's something you're interested in, we can do it independent, but that's the best I can do to get you numbers on Matt Lachey. The other nice thing about Matt Lachey is it has direct access out into the Matt Lachey Pass, which you can go north up into Charlotte Harbor or south to the Punta Rossa area where you're gonna enter the Gulf. So it gives you great access north and south if you're a boater. And once again, if you're into even fishing the, the flats, there's a bunch of it all in that area. It's surrounded by mangroves and it's a great little area even to jump out on a kayak or a paddleboard. Other towns that are completely out of the area are Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte. And I think we're gonna be doing a different video on that. I'm just gonna briefly touch on it. 
Um, Punta Gorda is a small, small town, and it's it does have a more historic feel. The historic district there is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you can run up there and have a lot of waterfront places to sit at as well. Fisherman's Village has a lot of shopping, a lot of restaurants, and surrounded by water. So that could be a great afternoon. We ride our motorcycles up there just to have that atmosphere. Live music again, normally playing there. Um, TT's is right down the road. That's another uh, Tiki Hut style place that sits right on Charlotte Harbor. And as soon as you cross the bridge, you're in Port Charlotte. They're building a resort over there right now that's on the harbor. Uh, but there's a lot of golf access properties in that area. Port Charlotte's built up a little bit more than uh, Punta Gorda. It's more like uh, Cape Coral where it does offer things uh, that you won't find in Punta Gorda. There is even actually a Best Buy there. So they do have the larger name stores there, uh, plenty of shopping and restaurants, and the properties there are, they're probably just in that Cape Coral range of pricing. You could get a little bit better and a little uh, worse deals from time to time, but I did notice many of the properties being offered, especially Golf Access, they're a little bit older. So that's something we'd have to screen out if you were somebody that was looking more for newer construction. Uh, we may have to either build or just screen it a little tighter. The other thing that's up in that Punta Gorda, Port Charlotte area is the airport. Punta Gorda Airport is now becoming so popular with airlines like Allegiant to, we just flew up to uh, Nashville out of Punta Gorda and it is the easiest experience. No stops, straight flight. Yeah, the plane might be a little tighter than some of the others. There's no conveniences, there's no snacks, there's no music, there's no TV, but uh, it's affordable and it's quick. So if you want that, go to the Punta Gorda Airport, fly in and out. Uh, they have a great parking space there too, just to leave your vehicle uh, and very inexpensive to do so. If you've learned anything with this video, please go ahead and subscribe to make sure that you get all the future videos or go ahead and watch one of these others that'll give you more information about living in the area. And if there's any question I can answer for you, you've got to call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast.